Hey, John Prevost here for whistlebiz.com. Thanks for checking in again today. Today is part four of our LID series, Learning, Improving, and Discovery series. Yesterday, we talked about what it takes to be a good follower and specifically how those qualities are complementary with level five leadership as well as servant leadership. Today, we're going to talk about the fourth rule, the fourth ground rule uh, for the LID series, and that is how you must apply a growth mindset to your job. And specifically when I say growth mindset, I mean that we learn from our failures, we fail quickly and we move quickly on our failures instead of being defined by our failures or defined by our successes like a fixed mindset is. We've talked about that on the individual basis, like just within our lives, and we've also talked about that on the organizational side, uh, imagining a company that's about the growth mindset, which would be fantastic um, if, if we were at that point. But now we're going to take another step in and we're going to imagine your job and we're going to pull your pull you out of your job and look at your job and imagine applying the growth mindset to that job. What would what would it look like? What if somebody stepped into your job and did your job with a pure growth mindset? What would they be working on? What would that look like? Um, and, and the reason we're going to do that is it, it, it pulls us out of the situation I and mean, it fully pulls our ego out of the situation uh, and, uh, and it liberates us more to be able to see purely how we should be executing within our environment. Okay, so the thought experiment is this. Imagine the growth mindset on your job and specifically what, what does that mean? Let's imagine a job where you have no fear of failure, right? And number two, you only work on the highest value work for the company. So those are the, th those are the, those are the two differentiators for the growth mindset on your job. Well, I think specifically what you would see quickly is that you would end up probably working on work that's old and hard. <laughs> so what does that mean? So old work, uh, you know, work that's been around for a long time, projects that kind of sit out there that, that nobody's worked on but still remain important are probably extremely important because of the fact they haven't fallen to the wayside. So look at those, what are those initiatives out there that nobody's been brave enough to take on, um, and, you know, and have just sat out there. They, they'll probably be high value because they've been around for years or maybe a year or maybe six months um, and nobody's taken them on. So, so that, that could be one. Another one is you would act, you would initiate, you'd be taking on new challenges because you wouldn't be fearful of failing or not failing. You, you would say, that sounds exciting and it sounds like a high value. I'm going to go, I'm going to go work on it. And then lastly, I think one that, uh, th that we would deal with a lot is being busy. We wouldn't be so worried about being busy all the time, and we, we should be more worried about um, doing the highest value within our jobs, right? So it wouldn't be running around all day long with a clipboard or something like that, you know, and just trying to stay busy, but actually being uh, more efficient with your time for your time for the company trying to achieve those highest values. So I, I'm a big proponent for asking for forgiveness over permission because I believe so often our fear of reprisal uh, within our organization is very perceived. And, and on the other hand, the initiation and the entrepreneurship that, uh, that you would be perceiving and the humility that you, you would be projecting is extremely contagious and extremely um, uh, helpful to an organization. If we look at the organization as being an entire organism that's shifting and changing all the time, if you can be that bright spot, or if you and some others can be that bright spot where, uh, where you're happy about your work, you're passionate about your work, and you're getting deep into doing the highest value because you know it's not about yourself, um, it, it's about the actual value of the work. It's not about being recognized, it's about being the actual uh, doing the actual value means you will have a higher result. You will be doing, it'll be harder, it'll be harder work to do, but you'll have more results because you're doing the highest value to the company. So that's it for today. So applying the growth mindset to your job and imagining what that would look like and extracting yourself out even further and trying to look at your job as an empirical case study uh, about what is the most important uh, elements of the work that you could be doing. So that's it for the day. I uh, hope you have a wonderful day. Let me know what you think and any feedback you have. Thanks so much. Bye.